Hiya folks, today I'm gonna to be changing the rear discs and the rear pads on this 2003 Vauxhall Vectra C. This is a petrol model, but I think it'll be same on the other models. So let's get on with it. Right, so the symptoms we've been having is that when you put the brakes on, there's a bit of a, a scraping noise coming from the back. So obviously it's gonna be the pads. I've had a quick look through the discs, through the wheels, and I can feel there's also a lip on the disc as well. So I thought for the sake of it, I might as well change them as well. I bought two new discs here and a set of pads and that comes to 58 pounds. And all you normally have to do is give them your vehicle registration and that's normally good enough. So let's have a look what we got. There's a security seal on these and that's nice to see that that's not been damaged at all. So let's have a look inside. Okay, so this is the rotor. Always advisable to check against your originals before you actually throw the packaging away, just to make sure they have given you the right ones. Because many a time I've gone to places like Euro Car Parts and they supply me with the wrong stuff. So that comes with an oily film residue over it. You probably can't see that. So do make sure that you clean this down with brake cleaner before you actually fit it. Here's the pads, again, with a safety seal on them, because I've had stuff before when I've been down and bought stuff where the seals have been broken. And I've actually had second-hand stuff inside where people have taken them back, saying they had the wrong ones. The person's never checked them. And uh, when I've opened it up, I've had second-hand pads in there. One side is that type, and the uh, other one, so that's a pair like that. Right, let's get the car jacked up. Okay then, I've got to get the car up in the air at the back, so I'm gonna loosen the wheel nuts before I do that, and then I'll jack the car up and put it on an axle stand as well for safekeeping. I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, I've jacked the car up, I've got an axle stand underneath it, I've released the handbrake, so now we can have a closer look at this. So, right, this is the caliper, obviously. Here's our disc rotor. You probably noticed that I had trouble getting that off, pulling the wheel off on the time lapse, and that was because this corrodes around here. So I've got some WD-40, because I'm gonna squirt this, because this hub also sits on this as well. You could give this a wire brush as well. So I've got a wire brush, I will do that as well, but I'm just gonna help it along. and just put some WD-40 around there, first of all, just to help things along. And uh, what we have is a handbrake mechanism, which you can probably see at the back here. We don't need to touch that, although I will give that a bit of a clean off. These are the sliding pins here. You've got one there and one down there on the caliper holding bracket. So we want to undo these first. These have got little caps on the back of them, which you can normally prise off. And then our bolt is in there. So we've got one there. Underneath, we've got another one there. If I just remove that cap, you can see it. There we go. So we've got to take them two off. Then we've got to pull these pins back. And then we should be able to take the uh, caliper body away possibly leaving the pads in situ. But first of all, we're gonna also prise this spring off here that holds the caliper on. And I'm gonna do that just by getting a screwdriver under there. Right, okay, so let's get that spring off first. There we go. And that one as well. They're always a bit uh, sticky because of the dust, so that's that off. Now these shouldn't be that tight in there, so. There we go, they're normally just uh, a gentle crack and they should undo. Right, then you need to get a screwdriver and just lever them through. There we go. And they should push all the way out. We want to take them out because we want to lubricate them. There we go. And as you can probably see there, all that rubbing this there stops them from sliding in and out and that can make your brakes bind on. So you want to give these a good clean. Uh, right, okay, let's crack this one. Same thing, shouldn't be that tight. 
There we go. Undo that pin. And just like the other one, we've got to push the pin out like that. Get the screwdriver underneath it as well. Push it right through. Take it right out. And it's exactly the same. This one's all sticky with residue as well. While I'm under here, I will show you the other two bolt bolts. You've got this big one here, and there's another one at the top. And once we've taken this off, we've got to undo the carrier, which is this bracket here. And that is done by them too. They'll be very tight, and they'll also be thread locked in as well. And also while you're under here, you will also check your hoses to make sure they're not cracked or whatever. And also check your pipes, your brake pipes there. These are covered in crap at the moment, but uh, also check your suspension, that there's no leakages on your dampers, which are there. And all these things would fail an MOT. So it's only a visual inspection. While you've got the wheel off, you might as well check these things. So hopefully now we should be able to take the actual caliper off just by prising it forward. Again, the pads should stay in situ. One of them may come out, I'm not sure, but uh, just ease it forward. And you don't want it to drop and hang on this pipe, so be careful when it does come off. Right, we should be able to move that off now. And as you can see, the cable for the brake cable is still connected and also the hose there. And we're just going to put that up out of the way over the back like that. Now we can just remove the pads. So you see how stuck they are? Look, that one's free, but this one's stuck, which would indicate that it's probably been binding on. And this is where you want to clean all these channels out when you take this bracket off. Give this a wood, good wire brush down and get these as clean as possible. I mean, look how tight that is. Look, look, there we go, look. Look how tight that was in there, look. And as you can probably see, how thin they are. The other one's just coming out nice and easy. And that's it. And as you can see, that was the rubbing noise that we had there. You can see where it's right down basically onto the pad there, and that's why I've just heard the rubbing noise. And straight away, rather than go any further, that's why I've done this. But that would have been picked up on an MOT anyway. Now these ones look a bit different actually than the ones I've got. So uh, whether or not these are the right ones or the wrong ones, I'm not too sure. I am assured that the other ones I've got are correct, so maybe these were a different type or a different make or whatever, I'm not sure. I've, I haven't seen this type before to be honest with you, but uh, there you go. That's the two pads. Now, as I say, there is a lip on this disc, so that's the reason why we're changing the disc as well. And to do that, we've got to undo this little nut in the center. I could have actually done that beforehand. Ideally, you could probably loosen that off before you take the brakes off with the handbrake on. Now, hopefully, if you're lucky, this T27, I'll be able to undo just by giving it a quick jolt. There we go. They're never normally that tight, but uh, I've had them before where they are tight, so. I got lucky on this chance. I should have done it at the beginning. So these are them here. Get these as clean as you can because uh, you don't want this head slipping. So make sure you give them a good wire brush down and do make sure you've got a mask on. You don't want to be breathing this dust in either. Right, I'm going to probably have to tap that on. And I've got a breaker bar here. You may probably need something like this because these are going to be very tight. Right, let's try and get this undone. Right, there we go. Oh, that was tight. Now I've got that one moving, let's try the top one. Again, probably gonna have to hammer it on first. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, there we go, got it moving. Now we got it moving. I can change over to the normal ratchet. Oh, right, okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. These were a pig to undo, and uh, I used an extension bar on a 3 8 socket there, as you can probably see. And uh, I managed to get them sort of caught with a thread at a time. These are really tight in there, so if you haven't got the right gear, obviously don't attempt it. Because the last thing you wanna do is round these nuts off. Or bolts, rather. Right, so. That's the reason why they're so hard to get out. They've got this uh, blue thread lock on them as well. So that's the reason you want to clean all this off before you uh, put these bolts back in as well. So otherwise you might end up damaging the threads. And also don't forget to put new thread lock on. So that's that bracket now comes off like that. And these can normally be seized on there as well. Lucky enough, our one is free. So they just pulls off. And that is it. As you can probably see on our disc there, we have got a quite a big lip on there. 
so it was good it was prudent of me to do this and there's also loads of dust in there as well so i'm going to move that out of the way and also while you're here you might as well check your wheel bearing as well this one feels all right so i'm happy with that there's no play or any raunchy noises with it and that's again another job you just want to do a visual check on why you've got this down right so i'm going to go back now and uh clean this bracket up clean these pins up this caliper i'm going to give a good wire brush down there's the piston there which we can see i'm just inspecting the rubber boot as well which looks like it's in good condition so this is just going to have a a gentle clean up and we've then got to wind this piston back into the caliper using a special tool but we'll do that in a minute i'll see you in a minute okay so we've got to wind the piston back in to the caliper now and i've got this uh, brake winding tool which has got various different things on it so we've got to find the right one that's it that will do so that goes in there like that we did this this plate to hold back now this one is the wrong one because this one is the anti-clockwise one which winds it in there. See, I'm winding that anti-clockwise and it's pushing a caliper into, that's the wrong one. We've got two adjusters in here. So this is the one I want. When I wind it in, it pushes the caliper in, as you can see there. So we'll stick that over there like that. We'll put that in there. Let's wind this right away in first. There we go, put that in there. Locate the pins on there. Like that. So we now want to wind this in. And we should then push the caliper in. Now, you'll hear a lot of people say about remove the cap on the reservoir. Technically speaking, as this piston comes out, the fluid in there will drop down. And as we're pushing the piston back in again, the fluid will come back up again. There will be no hydraulic lock there because we haven't lost any fluid. We're just replacing it coming out of this cylinder where it's been pushed further out and it's going back into the cylinder. So don't worry about removing the cap, not unless you know that while this, let's just say for example, this was out like this when I got the car and I don't know whether someone's taken that cap off and topped the fluid up in which case you'll be pushing this back in and if the fluid's been topped up obviously it's going to come to a standstill when it gets to the top but i haven't touched the fluid in this i know the fluid level is a bit down due to the fact that these are right out so i'm going to just safely know that i can carry on winding this in and it will just push the fluid back into the reservoir There we go. So that's back in now. I'll do that. And there we go, one piston fully back in. So I can put that at the back there now. Just leave that there for the moment. I have given that a bit of a wipe over, as you can probably see. And here's our repainted bracket now. It's all nice and clean, so that can go back on. And our two bolts, as you can see there, I've actually, I'm lucky enough, I've got a sandblaster. I was able to sandblast them, so they're nice and clean now. And I will put some thread lock on the ends there while we clamp that in place. So here we go. There we go. I'm not too mad with this. There we go. Okay, there we go. Nicely thread locked. Right, so here's our new disc, as you can see there, and I've got to clean it now, get that residue off of it. So just some brake cleaner on there like that. A little wipe down. All around the edge as well. Turn it over. Do the back side and all. So that's nice and clean and around here I also just like to put a smear of grease around there around the hub there when you put the disc back on don't go too mad with it just means that uh, if, 
if I have to take it off again in the future, hopefully it shouldn't bind up. That's the reason why I do that. So I'm gonna put my disc on. Let's get me a little hole up the top there. My disc retaining hole. I'm gonna plonk my disc on. I've got my little screw. There we go. There we go, that's the rotor back on. So I've got my repainted bracket there, which needs to go in here. And my new clean bolts with the thread lock on. And I don't know whether you can see how much simpler they actually screw in. Now all the threads have been cleaned. And once that uh, thread lock goes off, that will stop them from vibrating loose. Right, that's hand tight now, so I'm now going to lock them up. Ugh. There we go. Right, that's that back on. Right, okay then, so the pads go back in the carriers. These ones have got a different spring set up on these, but uh, they are for the right vehicle. Like that. Let's drop the caliper over the top. Of the pads like that and I've also got some uh, red rubber grease here just to lube up these pins that'll help them slide in and out so I'll put that back in just press on the caliper there we go in you go there we go Do the same to the bottom one. And then we tighten up the bottom one as well. Again, these have only got to be nipped up. That's it, that's all you need. Just check that top one again. There we go. Put the two rubber caps in. Like that. And as you can see, we've got a lovely floating caliper now. And then finish off by putting our spring back on the disc. Here we go, like that. Make sure it's pushed fully home. There we go. Just to have a little look around it. Our caliper's floating lovely. Our spring's on, holding that in place. The pads are all in, as you can see there, the spring's working as it should do there on this type of um, caliper. So what I'm gonna do now, is just apply my foot to the brake. That will push out, because the, the handbrake is automatically adjusting, pulled it up and down a couple of times, and then that should be it. Right, okay, so I'm in the car now. I'm gonna start the engine up, just to get a bit of brake vacuum. Foot on the brake, it's low, it's coming up now. Now it's back to normal. So the handbrake, again, as I said to you, this is self-adjusting. Pedal is as it should be. And just coming around here. Now, as you can see there, the fluid is, I've still got the other side to do, but the fluid is actually above the max now. So it's right up to the top there. Now the other side is gonna be uh, out as well. So what I may have to do is to take some fluid out of here as you can see, it's right up to the top now. So someone may have topped this up. So there's no room for me now to push the second one to push the fluid back into the system. So I will have to take a drop of this out to allow for the, lev the fluid out of the piston on the other side to come back. So yes, I have had to check this, but you don't need to remove the cap for the fluid to come back in. So when I, when I actually checked this before I started, it was below the maximum mark, which is, as I said, what I, what I expected it to be. So now I've pushed that, it's come all the way through here. So someone may have topped this up before I owned the car while the pads were low. So I will take some of this fluid out and then that will allow for the, the, the piston to go back on the other side. Right, so I'm just about to clamp the other side now. I've done it all, so I'm just taking this off. 
and as you can see the fluid's quite high so I've got a syringe I'm just going to take a bit out right so I've taken it just below the max you can see how much I've taken out there there's not that much in the piston so uh, that should be enough so I'm going to put the cap back on this is just to let you see that you don't need to take the, the cap off only if you've obviously got too much fluid in there which we checked so I'm going to put the cap back on now there shouldn't be any spillage because I know I've, I've drawn out enough of that cylinder than the, what's in the piston caliper. So let's go around now and wind that caliper in. Right, so we've got the same piston caliper tool. I've already done my visual inspections of all my hoses. I've cleaned everything down. And as you can see there, we'll put our rewind tool in exactly the same as we did before. Locate our pins, turn our centre nut until it comes into contact with the inner side of the caliper like that and we're winding in again clockwise on some cars the near side or let's call it the passenger side in the UK cars sometimes with some cars you have to wind these in the other way like anti-clockwise so depending on your car you've got will depend on what way your calipers wind in so you always check that but on these uh, vectors they both wind in clockwise as you can see there we go just undo that take that away and that's the caliper as you can see there fully wound in now just to prove that you don't need to remove your cap if we come back round to the front of the car and undo that there we go, that level's come up a little bit. And everything is as it should be. So you don't need to remove your cap, as what you'll hear people say. And nine times out of 10, they're just saying it because they've heard other people say it. That is perfect. We're up to our line now. We're just on our line, on our maximum. So that was ideal. And no way did we have to remove that cap to bleed the brakes. There was no hydraulic lock. You'll hear people write down and they swear that you get hydraulic lock, but you don't, as you just seen there. There we go. Job done. How about that? Okay then, there we go, job done. I'm happy with that and I think Sharon will be happy with that as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like my videos, do check out my other playlist where I've got loads of Vauxhall Vectra videos and also Vauxhall Signums and plenty of other car stuff as well. And if you do like my channel, click the subscribe button there if you like it and also ring the little notification bell and set your preferences to all. That way you get notified every time I upload a video. Thanks very much, I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.